Hello, and welcome to another exciting chapter in Accounting 2301's homework. We're bringing you chapter 10, and we're going to go over the simple basics of bonds. Again, how we do bonds in accordance with chapter 10 using a few of the problems. So, and we're going to have a few videos. So, awesome videos right here going on. And we bring in the first little part. This one on five, they actually ask you to end the uh, Enviro Company issues a 8% 10 year bond with a par value of 310000 and a semi annual interest payment. On the issue date, the annual market rate for these bonds is 10%, which implies its selling price at 87.5% right there. Again, anytime it shows it just as a regular number, but it's a of, that's an actual percentage, it's a financial term. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> Alright. So, with that being said, we're going to really just go ahead and take care of the cash going on here. We have to create our journal entry. So, record the issue bonds with a par value of 310. Well, here, it actually has a selling price of less than 310. So, we didn't actually receive all the cash. Oops. So, with this being said, there has to be a discount going on here. So, first thing is how to figure out the cash itself because we, when we issue these, we receive cash. Okay? So, we're going to take 310,000. So, I'm going to go to my calculator and times it by this 87.5% which is 0.875 okay so the cash that we actually received was 271,250 so 271 250 sure I transfer that right good cool alright so the next one is either going next account or general general journal is usually either going to be discount or premium. Again, if it's less than the hundred percent, or we're going to receive less than the actual par value, it will end up being a discount. Okay, if it ends up being greater or I mean greater than hundred percent, or I'm going to receive cash that's greater than the par value, it's going to be a premium. Okay, so right here, bonds payable. Okay, notice I have discount on there, but I'm just kind of skipping it for right now because bonds payable is the next one, and this one's always a credit. Again, it's payable, so it's a liability, and we really want to owe the 310000 no matter what. Face value of the bond. Is always going to be our payable. We just happen to basically sell it for less than what it was, I mean, what we originally have on face value. So all we're going to do is take the difference of these two. So 310 minus 271,250 equals 38,750. Okay. And that's all you gotta do for chapter five. So always hit check my work. Want to make sure you did everything correct and everything's good. So we're good to go. Question six. Question six brings on prepare the journal entry for issue of these bonds. Assuming the bonds issued for cash on January 1st, 2017. Garcia Company issues a 12% 15 year bond with a par value of 460,000. 
and a semi-annual interest payments. Again, not dealing with interest, so that's cool. On the issue date, the annual market rate for these bonds is 10%, which implies a selling price of 113 and one fourth percent. So again, this one, I can see it's above 100%, means we're going to have more cash than our actual uh, face value. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to take the face value and times by this, this percentage. And again, you're going to have to convert that to decimal. One fourth is 0.25. So this is actually 113.25%. Or here, 1.1325. 1 so we actually received cash of 520,950. So the journal entry is going to look similar. First is your cash. And of course, we're going to put the 52950. Next will be a premium this time, not a discount, because we're getting more cash again than our bond payable. And here's our bond payable, and this was 460. So again, all we have to do is take the difference of these two. So 520, 950. Minus 460, right? Yep. Equals out to 6950. Okay. And again, since this is a premium, it's naturally credited to increase it. Also, you need a balance. So, again, check my work. Everything's good. Our numbers do run. Premiums, again, always credit. Discount is always debit. So again, the quick way. If it's over 100% or we're going to receive more cash than our bond payable, our face value, that's going to be a premium. If it's less than, it's a discount. Okay. Let's go ahead and move to question 7. All right. So question 7 brings in a Madrid company. And they plan to issue a 9% bond on January 1st, 2017, with a par value of 4,200,000. The company sells 3,780,000 of the bond at par on June 1st. The remaining 420,000 sells at par on July 1st. The bonds pay interest semi-annually as of June 30th and December 31st. Step 1. Record the entry of the first interest payment on June 30th, 2017. Alright. So, in reality, we actually sold the whole bond, but we have to watch out on the dates. This 420 was not sold by June 30th. Okay? It was sold the day after. So we're only working with 3,780,000 at 9% interest. Okay? And it's paid semi annually. Okay? So, with that being said, we have to take our money. So, 3780, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, so 378, I hate when it doesn't have commas, <laughs> it makes it tough, times it by our interest, which is 9%, and then 2 we should have a payment of 170,100 so again this is going to be interest expense 
of the 171.00 and it should actually be cash going out because it was sold at par we don't have to worry too much so and everything's good right now okay again it only showed the answer is not complete because we didn't do part two always do part one check your work and then move to part two all right so part two right here next is just record the sale of bonds for cash on July 1st well since it was sold at par it's really cash of the amount which is 420,000 and bonds payable like I said the easiest one are usually the ones actually sold for face value if it was for, sold for a discount or for a premium that adds a little bit other items to it especially when it's related to the interest payment so now fully check everything is good which is great so that's question seven already knocked out let's move to question eight all right so now we're dealing with Boston Enterprises and they issue a bond that have a one million six hundred fifty thousand dollar par value matures in 20 years and pays 10 percent interest semi-annually again we're looking at semi-annually we typically stay with twice a year but you could have many payments depending on the contract but twice a year seems good the bonds are sold at par yay we love that it says sold at par so how much interest will Boston pay in cash to bondholders every six months question two will be prepare journal entries to record the issue of the bond and the first interest payment on June 30th and the second interest payment okay and the last is prepare journal entries for issuing assuming the bond was issued at 95 and 105 so number three is a bring back of one uh, five and six but let's go ahead and do this knock this out so par value in itself is whatever value the bond is happens to be one million six hundred fifty thousand and the semi-annual rate is technically it looks in semi-annual it's whatever 10 percent is divided by two okay because this one's looking for the semi-annual the way we've been doing it is basically taking the multiplication and then divide by two here it's pretty much want the the rate already divided by two so watch out for that that's why it's five percent and of course connect is already doing the math for us helps us out so require two let's do the first part which is the issue of the bond at par again when it's at par it's just a simple journal entry of cash being debited for the face value and bonds payable nothing too fancy going on there okay step two we car the interest payment well since again we don't have any uh, discounts or premiums again it's basically bond interest expense and dealing with cash and it's going to be for the amount that we figured and required one okay so 82,500 And then guess what? When we record the second interest on December 31st, nothing changes. These are payments that have to happen. 
So, bond interest expense, and then cash of the 82500 And again, I want to hit check my work. I want to see if required two is all correct, and it is, so we're good to go. Let's move on to require three now. All right, so we're issuing these bonds. Now, again, as soon as I see 95%, all right, at 95, 95%, it's less than 100. This is already telling me it's going to be a discount. So let's put in cash, discount, and bonds payable. All right, come on. There we go. And first off, we already know what bonds payable is. Again, it's the one million six hundred and fifty, and now it's just trying to figure out what cash and what our discount is. So, one million six hundred and fifty times point nine five ends up being one million five hundred sixty-seven five hundred. Now let's find the difference. And it'd be somehow 82,500. That was just funny. All right. Somehow it was dry on the money for that one. Okay. Now let's finish it off. Close this out. Go to 2. So that 105. So it's now going to be greater. So again, since it's greater. We now have a premium. And as long as you keep it in this format, which basically leads your premium or discount in the middle, it makes life a little bit easier in the way I see it on the journal entries. Because then all you're doing is changing it based on what you've already seen. So, All we have to do is go here, into that, times now 1.05, and now we take the difference. Apparently, again, it's 82,500. I don't know why this question likes 82,500, but it does. So, again, it goes to credit for premiums, debit for discounts. Again, we're balancing things out, so don't get confused with that. Okay, finish off check my work. Make sure all everything's a green check mark, and we're good. Nice. All right. So heading to question 9. Question 9 is going to bring us a lot of stuff. So we're going to have to look at this and see what's going on. Alright. So Hillside issues a 1,700,000 bond of 8%. 15-year bond dated January 1st, 2017. That pays interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. The bond are issued at a price of one million four hundred sixty-eight nine hundred ninety. Okay. If we notice this, this is less than your par value. So with that being said, this is a discount. Oh, well, automatically is a discount. Because again, if I put in cash. We received 1468990 even if I did not know the middle account, and I look at bonds. And this one's at 1700023, at 1700000 I can tell right away 
which side needs more help and that's going to be debit to balance this out and since discounts are only done by debit that's my discount okay so this just tells me I gotta find the difference between the two so one million seven hundred one two three minus a strange number one four six eight nine nine zero says we got two hundred thirty one thousand and ten bucks okay cool see what if everything's good everything's good because we're definitely gonna need that discount later on in this problem uh, so part 2a and 2c to 2c part 2a through 2c basically it's all these blanks right here all we gotta do now is start to actually figure out what our discount is our par value and there's gonna be a lot of fun stuff here so first off our par maturity value okay so par mature value curious was one million seven hundred thousand okay and of course we multiply that by the annual rate and that's going to be what was that that was eight percent eight percent and we divide it by the year and we pay this semi annually this is weird but basically 612 that's the only one that's actually in half basically one half right there okay connects trying to throw you all these fractions but 612 is one half and then it actually has you calculate the thing so, eight times point zero eight uh, equals and divide that by two. So, sixty eight thousand. That's our cash payment. Okay, cool. So again, basically doing the math. There we go. Now. Again, we have this par maturity value of one seven zero zero one two three, and this is going to be subtraction of bond price of one four six eight nine nine zero, and this is equaled out to our actual discount on bonds. Which I can check on required one, two hundred thirty-one and ten cent dollars two thirty-one zero ten. All right. So now it's going to actually have you do straight line discount amortization. I know, fun stuff going on here. Going through all this math, you divide. And it's going to ask you semi annual periods. All right. So, semi annual periods is, is this. Again, that's taking how many years times how many payments. So, 15 times 2 is going to be 30. Okay. So, now we got to go to our calculator, go 231. 0, 1, 0, and divide by 30. So we're looking at an amortization again round of 7,700. 7, See if they actually have a rounding note. So when it does it, we'll just round and it's automatically putting it in as a whole number. Sometimes Connect does that for you. That's great. So we're rounding 
that's 7,700. Next, it's taking the semi-annual cash payment, 68,000. Now, of course, we add these together. And this is going to be your total bond interest expense, which sixty-eight three hundred, right? No, nope, just sixty-eight hundred. I don't know where I got the three hundred. And we got seven five seven hundred seventy-five seven hundred. Okay, a lot of stuff going here, and it's just basically knowing the formulas. So to get semi-annually cash interest payment. So it's par value times annual rate divided by basically uh, two or one half. If you actually get, technically it's times by one half. So they may actually want multiply. So if it's multiply, which I'm thinking it's going to be now because it's one half, but usually we just divide by two, okay? This does not, it has a fraction. So let's go with that now. All right. Par value is, again, subtracted by bond price equals our discount. Divide that by how many periods there are. will equal what we're going to have for straight line depreciation or straight line discount amortization. Then you have semi-annual cash payments plus discount on amortization. That equals bond interest expense. Let me double check. Yep, everyone want multiplication. Normally, as you see, I've done, I just divide by two, so there's no worries on that. Here, they want multiply by six and 12. Okay. All right. Require three. So, oh, require three goes. Complete the below table to calculate total bond interest expense to be recognized over bond's life. Alright. So blank payments of blank. Okay. So we're looking at bond interest. And we're looking at 30 payments of our bond interest expense. Which has to be 75700 Okay, par value at maturity is 1,700,000. So it looks like we're going to repay 3,971,000, but we've only borrowed 1,468,990. Okay, so total bond interest expense is 2,502,10. Let's make sure all numbers are correct. And it doesn't like that interest payment. Oh my. Okay. So, they don't want us to use that discount, it looks like. But that was what it was. So here it is. So apparently, let's see if they want just the 68,000. Alright, did I put that in wrong? No. Okay. See. That's a little weird how they want to do that. Since it's all dealing with bond interest expense. And they even said it right here. Bond interest expense. But this is just how Connect is. They want that actual interest payment. So, go figure. They should have been a little bit more clear with that, but they weren't. It's okay. We know exactly how much it is. We're good to go. Okay? So, that's a good thing. That's why I always say, do check my work. Okay? If you don't do check my work, it really makes it tough. Alright. So, unanalytized discount and carrying value. Alright. So on January 1st, we had this, 231,010. Okay, and carrying value 
is basically to I mean carrying value on itself this should be one million should actually be the how much the bond is one four six eight nine ninety let's see what's going on yep apologize for that brain kind of froze on that it happens so basically it wants to show you that it's going to make it to one million seven hundred thousand because we're going to be reducing the discount but raising the carrying value okay because every time we make a payment we're going to lose seven thousand seven hundred well that's got to go somewhere and it actually goes in the carrying value so calculator 231 010 minus and we're now at 223310 Okay, and we're just going to keep going. So now it's two fifteen six ten. Okay, next one two zero seven nine ten. All right, and one more. 200 to 10. So while the discount is going down, we're leaving the discount. We're going to notice that the carrying value is going to try to get back up to 1,700,000 because the discount is dissipating. So with this, we're going to have 1,468,990. Plus seven seven zero zero, so one four seven six six ninety. Four seven six six. One four seven. Ah, sometimes it's hard to get big numbers over. One four eight four three ninety. One four eight four three ninety. Alright. So most likely I'm gonna probably Make a mistake on this. It's okay. One million four hundred ninety-two. Okay, and then plus another seven zero. One four nine nine seven nine. Four nine. Okay. Check my work, and there we go. So again, we're trying to get by the time 30th payment comes, this is going to be emptied, and this one should be about 1,700,000. Alright, last part of nine is record the first interest payment. So, oh, I have interest expense. Where I have discount and of course cash. Okay, so cash is still our interest, so we gotta go all the way to A2. And that's gonna be the 68,000, and of course the discount is 7,700. So 68, 3. So there we go. And of course, the addition of the two, which again is on this one, 75,700. And 
then it's going to ask us to do the same thing. And you're going to notice with all interest, it's always the same. Now, again, discount is supposed to be going down. That's why it's credited. And again, it basically helps out the cash right here. We add these two up, and our bond interest expense is going to be higher. So, since it's the same, and then 68. All right, hit check my work. Everything's good. Everything's good. Should say answer is correct and complete. We're good to go, and we're going to move to number 10, which, of course, number 10 in itself is going to be the premium now. So we're going to go through all this again. So you ready? Let's go. So now... Instead of a discount, we have a premium going on, as evidenced by the cash being greater. So, type in our journal entry. Good, we got premium, and of course, bonds payable. Cash is already given to us as the two million. I love it when they keep basically the same on bonds payable. Now all we got to really do is find the difference of the two. So, 2 million, 0, 80, 794, minus 1 million, 700. It was 387.94. Oops. Wrong spot. Remember, premiums are always a credit. Again, gotta keep in balance. So that one's good. Now we gotta go to 2A. Okay, par value again, it's going to be multiplied by the annual rate. This time, let's see, it's still 8% times 612 for half, and that was that 68,000. I like it when they keep the same things, makes life easy. Bye -bye. So this time you notice that they switched the bond price and the par value basically because of, again it's greater. Oh. Okay. So we're going to subtract 1,700,000. Lots of zeros. We wish we had that many zeros in our bank account. And that comes out to our bonds payable. This is basically again required one, just spread out. And of course, we're again we're going to divide it by how many periods. Again, this is a 15 year semi-annually. So 15 times 2 is 30. And so we jump to our calculator. 380, 794, divide by 30, or equal to 12,693. Okay. Last little thing we got is a semi annual cash payment. And now with the premium, though, we subtract. Okay. With discount, we add premium, we subtract. So really, this is going to be 
Minus by 12, 6, 9, 3. So 55, 307. Okay. Always hit check my work. Everything's good. Just watch out again. If you're finding that it says answer is not correct, make sure you put those operations in. Okay. Okay. Require three. 30 payments of 68, 1, 2, 3. Par value at maturity. Less than amount borrowed, which was 2 million. Should be a lot less interest, actually, bond interest. Again, part 3. Check my work. Everything's kosher. Now we can move to part four. And now you're going to see something interesting going on here. Alright, so right here we have unadvertised premium, which again was 380.794. Carrying value. Currently is two eighty seven ninety four. Okay, again, carrying values. What we got in for cash? So you're gonna see both of these are gonna decrease again because this has to eventually equal to face value. So with this, we're gonna subtract each one. By whatever we're discounted by, 12,693. So, 380,794 minus 12,693. We have 368,101. Okay, minus 12,693, 32715 and last but not least 330022 all right again notice we're not doing it for the whole time if we actually did it it would actually get to zero and carrying value will be 1,700,000 but we're not just going to work on that. Okay, 20879 3 20698 1 Okay. 20554 Okay. Again, minus 12693 2042 And last one. 2 3 Okay. So, when we hit check my work, should all be correct. Notice again with premiums, the when we annualize, premium goes down, the carrying value goes down. Again, we're trying to reach 1,700,000. Basically our par value. Okay? Last part record the interest payments so again we're going to have bond interest expense this time since it's a premium we're going to have the premium and the cash that went out so cash was still 68,000 our bond premium was the 12,693 
and of course going to 2A, 2C. We're doing this last one right here. We have 55, 307. That's basically our bond interest expense. Okay. So again, with premium, since we're lowering premium, hence naturally a credit, that's going to be a debit now. So that's the only thing that you got to watch out for when we're dealing with interest. Of course, again, payment two is the same thing that's going on. So same accounts, same numbers. Because interest doesn't change at all. So, and then finish it off. 55307. So, the biggest thing to watch out for, again, is on premium discount. If it's going to be a debit or credit, again, if it's the interest payment, it's going to be a debit for premium since it's lowering, and a credit for a discount since it's lowering. When it's issuing, discount is a debit, premium is a credit. We basically set them up then. Then we have to depreciate them or basically lower them as we go out. So finish it off with check my work. Everything's there. Cool. We can move on to finally to the last problem. Alright, so last problem. The debt to equity ratio. Which I don't even remember being actually in the notes. So, surprise going on right here. Surprise! So, debt to equity ratio. This should be our liabilities divided by equity. Check. Good. Everything's good. This one's just a surprise. Did not see this one coming. So, Atlantic Corporation and Company has 420, 1, 2, 3. And divide by total equity, uh, 490, 1, 2, 3. And then you have Spokane. Sounds like something off the office, Spokane. Okay, and then basically it's going to ask, which company appears to have riskier finance structure? Basically, which one seems to have more, right? This should be Atlanta. Why do we go with? And it is. Atlanta is more than one. Debt to equity ratio. This is basically how much the owner had to finance the liabilities or be able to if owner finance the liabilities in itself. If it's more close to one, that means you actually got more finances from elsewhere. So your finance structure is actually pretty good. You probably got more cash. But if the owner had to put in a lot of equity into the company, uh, your finance is probably not good. That's why it's asking for riskier finance structure. And this is how, as an investor, you actually look into seeing how much the owner has to actually put into the company. Okay? So that does it for Chapter 10. We've gone through all 11 questions and even brought in the surprise debit to equity ratio. So, again, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And this has been another exciting chapter in Chapter 10 Homework with your host, Professor Narragon, signing off.